Hey, this is Robert Plank from CourseCorrectBook.com. We are getting started with the party, and I want to tell you a few things. I want to tell you, don't publish a book for your business and do what I'm going to show you instead. I do want you to have a book. I want to be able to buy your book. I want to be able to get your book in the mail. I want to be able to leave a review of your book. Uh, I want your book. You need to have a book, and even if you're the kind of person that had a book or put out a book, three or four years ago and it needs updating or maybe you need like a, a smaller book to let people know about like your new idea. I mean, what is the, the crime in you personally having a handful of books, different ones for different occasions, and maybe have like that, the older book and the newer book. But I don't want you to publish your book. And let me explain. First of all, what have you done that's worked the very first time. Well, the first time that you, you drove a car, you were not that great at it. Uh, my, my son has not learned to walk it. He's so close, he's crawling. And I guarantee that the first time that you tried to walk, however many years or decades ago, it's not like you, you tried to walk and fell over and just gave up forever completely. And so uh, I think that that's a more healthy way of looking at maybe the, the things that you could possibly be frustrated about these days. And like, I, I get it, right? We're, we're entrepreneurs and our focus is split. And it's really, it's fun to start projects. It's fun to finish them, but it's not always fun uh, for that middle part. And so many times I feel like, I wish there was like a thousand hours in a day, right? I wish I had like 30 employees I wish there were 10 copies of me because so many times I feel like maybe only like 10 or 20% of my ideas or the things I write down or I start actually make it to, to fruition, actually make it to that completing stage. And I also feel like even out of the things I do put out, I feel like maybe only 10 or 20% of those things really blow up. And what that tells me is that it's a numbers game, right? Because there's that whole concept of like 80, 20, right? Where 80% of what you do is just, is just does not pay off, is a waste. And then, but so many times in life, it feels like not only is it 80, 20, but even like within that 20%, there's like even a 20% of the, the 20%. And it's okay. It's okay to be frustrated. Uh, we're am among friends here. I can relate. I, I can feel you. I know that we're all on our own journey, but maybe you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you know what that means? It means that when things aren't working out for you, it's time to get outside of your bubble. It's time to do something that you have not done before. That way you can get a result that you also have not received before. And maybe you've heard of that saying, and maybe you thought it was cheesy, but, but it's true, right? If, if things are not working out for you, change up your schedule. Uh, I have uh, recently been playing around. Sometimes I wake up at like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., just to have that quiet early time in the morning. And something else I noticed that was happening with me personally was I was not showering or changing into my day clothes until around 11 a.m. or noon. And I, I thought I was doing such a good job. I was, I was waking up, getting right into some a business building, some working, and then the baby would wake up, do some dadding, uh, and then uh, spend time there and go back to working. But then by noon, I was finally taking a shower and I, I felt like crap. And so I changed things up. I changed up my schedule. I made sure to take care of myself. I made sure to go for a walk when I needed to get that fresh air, get to showering. And I'm glad that you're here because that's what it's all about, right? You're here because you decided to do the right thing and make time in your schedule and hang out with me and talk to me. And I wanna help you solve some problems. And I want you to have a book but I don't want you to publish a book. I don't want you to write a book. And I do not want you to even spend more than 20 or 30 minutes at the most working on your book, which seems crazy, right? Because you think of like a book that's this size, how long does it take? A book that th that's this size, does it take weeks, months, years? How much time thinking? How much time revising? How much time formatting? Figuring out just the right uh, fonts and like pictures and things like that. Well, how about a better way? How about a way that does not involve really throwing out anything that you've done before and uh, a way that doesn't really invalidate anything you've done in the past, a way that does not involve any extra time, any extra effort, uh, and not even, even a lot of extra money, just a, a new, better path to get to where you need to go. And we'll be talking about you and your path and your goal today, but I want you to think about this. What do these companies 
have that you don't. And this is just a little a thought exercise because sometimes it's easy to uh, just get caught up in the day to day and say, I've got to go and write some stuff and I've got to go and click on some emails. And sometimes let's just think about the big picture because you are supposed to be the, the boss of your business, aren't you? Aren't you supposed to be like the, the CEO? Well, maybe it's time to start acting like one and, and think about what's the big picture, right? And what are you doing, where you're headed, and maybe what are you, what shouldn't you be doing, and what should you be doing more of? So if you think about companies like P90X, Dave Ramsey, Tony Robbins, Apple, Tesla, WordPress, Airbnb, Twitter, Facebook, what do they all have in common? Well, you, you've heard of them and they're maybe a little bit outrageous, but if you think about this for a second, P90X, Apple, Tesla, what do they have that you don't and what do they have in common? Well, I'll give you a second to, to think about that and you can go in the chat box and give me some guesses if you want, but it's okay, it's not a test. There's no way to get anything wrong. I just want you to think about this. When, like you, you know about WordPress and there's like personalities with, with Tesla and Apple and things like that. So what do they have in common? What do they have? that you don't. Well, you might think, well, lots of money, right? Like uh, Elon Musk is like the most, the richest person in the world. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tim, Tim Apple, Tim something, right? Uh, uh, has all this money and like Steve Jobs. Well, it's not that they have lots of money because uh, I'm sure that, you know, you know, some people that have money, but don't know what to do with it. And it's not about having resources. It's about you being resourceful. Well, is it about having a, a wacky, kooky, larger than life character behind things like uh, a Bill Gates or like Jack Dorsey, the guy who runs Twitter has a huge beard. Well, I don't think you really need that. Uh, is it involving having this sort of cult-like status that involves just throwing out everything that you've done? And well, if you are an Apple person, then you, you have to adopt the whole Apple ecosystem. Uh, maybe not. Well, what about controversy? Well, I guess some of these people uh, do crazy things and, and do things that, that make people mad, but do you really need controversy in your business in order to stand out, get noticed, make sales? Like, I don't think so. I think that you personally can just be you and just be yourself. And here's the thing that uh, I think that you personally watching this and listening to this right now need to tap into and need to uh, just have this idea in your head. And here it is. It's to have a business opportunity, a, a biz op for short, which can be a bad word, but a biz op in disguise. So think about this. P90X, I'm not sure if you heard of it or not. It's this whole system where you, you lose weight and you, you drink these shakes and you do all this uh, crazy hard exercising, but they don't present it as science, right? They don't present it as a, like a how-to instruction manual. It's a new thing to jump onto. And it, it means that you're not uh, doubling down on what you're already doing. You're not putting in double the time, double the work. You're just, you have this goal already, right? Which is to lose weight or to make money or something like that. And you've been trying it on your own, maybe without a plan or with half a plan, or maybe you had a plan at some point and it just, you just haven't stuck with it. And maybe it's time for a new, better, simpler plan that actually gets you there. And so I want you to, to think about this and we'll circle back around uh, to this idea of you personally, whatever it is that you're offering in whatever niche, can you make it more of an opportunity where uh, it doesn't have a lot of prerequisites and you don't have, it doesn't involve like a lot of piecing things together. It's just a new package, a new way of getting to where you already uh, are going. And let me back up for a second, okay? Uh, and have you ever seen this picture where there is uh, like this guy and he's like eagerly uh, kind of chipping away and getting to the diamonds and someone else is just almost barely at the goal and just gives up. And I I'm sure that there have been times in my life when I was so close to that goal and I gave up and I don't even know now because I, I didn't continue. And maybe you've been uh, that in that place as well. Because if you've ever been discouraged, lonely, about to give up at the end of your rope, uh, they call it halt, right? Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. If you've been blaming yourself, then consider this to get you out of a rut, get you out of a funk, whatever term you want to say. Consider 
the people. Jerry Seinfeld would say, who, who are these people? Because it's easy to get bogged down in the, in the clicking of the mouse, right? In like in clicking around and making some web pages and, and figuring out your CSS and figuring out your, your tax write-offs and things like that. But that's all details. That's all minutia. And it's easy to get caught up in the details and then completely confuse yourself, uh, yeah, confuse yourself and then wonder, well, wh where did I even start? What am I even doing? And I'm not sure what I'm doing, where I'm going. I just know that I have to keep moving forward and it just has me completely frustrated. So instead of all that, think about these few types of people. Think about the people that you could network with. And so I'm a computer programmer and I, I'm sure that you probably are not, but if I'm thinking about I'm making some new, some new platform, some new plugin, some new piece of software, instead of uh, worrying about font sizes and colors and the size of boxes and pixels and all these things, think about who will use these things, right? Who are the people that are actually going to put this into practice? And so in my case, there, I have uh, all kinds of different software and I have a membership plugin. And I was thinking the other day, like, what if some, uh, some instructor or some like online school used my membership plugin and what sorts of things would I add in there so that way they could put that into easy use for a school? I got to thinking of what if there was a, like a landlord who had to manage all kind like a, a community and manage like uh, like rent payments and deal with issues with the like with the plumbing or allow tenants to talk to each other that would be an interesting use of a membership plugin and so thinking about the people asking yourself who are these people will uh, get you to thinking about the future will get you even thinking about where will this be put into use soon and these are people who need your help, okay? So we have people on the call like Barbara Hales or people like Mike Harrison or people like Ray Mackey, people like Mr. Chuck Charles Hooper from formerly Turlock, California. And so there are people out there who need your help figuring out how to, how to be a better speaker or how to overcome their confidence issues or leadership issues. But think about instead of what font size or, or color or uh, I don't know, like a co computer you're going to use or something think about who are the people in the future who are going to put your your training uh, and your, your products and your advice and your coaching and whatever it is to good use and improve their lives and improve the lives of others and just have it keep on expanding and keep, keep on getting better and remember your support system your friends it's easy to think that you're the only person involved in your business but uh, i guarantee there's someone that, that you run things by sometimes. And I'll run things by uh, some of my, like my colleagues. I'll run things by some of my super old friends. I'll run things by my wife. And they'll be, I'll, I'll kind of run different ideas past different people. And I'll really like water it down or like strip it down and ask in like really simple terms and ask my wife things in non-technical terms. And then I'll ask some like techie friend something in less emotional, but more techie terms, right? And so we have different uh, things for different purposes. And there are all kinds of people will get you out of a rut if you're stuck in one, right? If you're, if you're too just boxed into your, into your Zoom box or too boxed into your office or just stuck on the computer or stuck on the phone, figure out what sorts of people you can associate with, talk to, or make something for and, and that's what's more important anyway. Who cares about the, the specifications or who cares even about a lot of the finer details? What matters more is people with problems that you can solve their problems. And heck, you have your own problems, so it's also your job to solve your own problems while solving other people's problems. So focusing on the people is your key to overcoming writer's block, right? If you're like, oh, I gotta, gotta write my book, I don't know what to write. Well, what if you pictured an exact person who needed help, for example, like repairing their credit score? And you're like, oh, well, where do I even start with a, a book about repairing a credit score? Well, do you have that friend that is stuck or needs help 
And what advice would you give that friend? Well, hey, that helps you to overcome that writer's block and gets you motivated and gets you the discipline to get out of bed in the morning and to maybe power through, even if you don't feel like it. Because I have to tell myself, even, I mean, even as recently as this week, I have to tell myself that so many times I'm sitting on the couch or I'm sitting in bed and I say, ah, oh, the computer is over there and I need to go and, and get, get something done and get something started. And I don't want to do it. And I sit down and I do it anyway. And about maybe 12 minutes and 30 seconds in every time is when something just kicks in and I find my groove and, and then I'm excited, but I don't get excited until 12 minutes and 30 seconds in. And it's, but I always, I always tell myself, oh, it has to be 10 minutes before. No, it can happen part of the way through. So who the heck am I to be saying all these things? Well, I'm, I guess I'm wearing the same shirt as in the picture. Or no, I guess it's a different shirt, right? There's print on it. But anyway, I'm Robert Plank. My website is coursecorrectbook.com. And I want very soon for that to be your website as well, because my ulterior motive here in us talking is I want you to be in my book. I want us to be in a book together. And I want to be your person, at least for the moment. I want to be that, that new person that number one, you associate with, that gets you out of the rut and is part of your breaking your, your patterns, habits, routines, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but, and we'll get to more on that later. But I just, I want to be your, your, your biz op, your business opportunity, your breath of fresh air, your new way of getting to where you want to go already. And I'm a computer programmer, like I said already, and I quickly realized with all this computer programming that nothing you create matters without the people. And if you think about maybe an example we can all understand, Facebook, right? What really is so special about Facebook? Oh, well, you can go to it and you can, you can write a quick update and it goes on your wall. So, well, you can take a picture and then you can put the picture on your wall. Okay, well, great. Well, what's really magical about Facebook is that all your friends are there, right? And you can choose one friend and see what they're up to without having to catch up. And you can post something and get 50 people or five people excited about that thing that you just posted and talk to people you haven't uh, spoken to, but it's all about the people, right? People out there have real problems and what they've been doing so far has not been working, or maybe it was working, but it stopped working, or maybe it is working, but it is not sustainable. It's a, it's a lot of work, and it's just something I have to keep doing. I'm tired. I don't like doing it. They need your help. They need your shortcut that, that you've, you've kind of uh, plowed through the forest, right? You've taken your machete, and you've hacked out a, a path through this forest, and they just need to get on the trail that you've already blazed for them, but they need your help. And my question for you today is, what would happen if you had access to just the right people that you needed to help? And that's kind of the name of the game, right? A center of marketers call this uh, by terms like a list and, and traffic. And that's what we're looking for when we are are going to networking events and posting on Facebook and YouTube and LinkedIn and all the things that you've heard that you need to do, uh, but sometimes it's hard to stick with, or sometimes you don't, especially on social media, you don't always see a, a lot of results and, and you've tried all these things, right? You've, you've heard, you need to make content, you need to make 500 videos. Ah, I'm still working on that. And I feel bad that I'm not consistent with it. You've heard that you need to run Facebook ads and you say, ah, yeah, but I've done it and I blew $2,000 on running all these ads and nothing came of it. Oh, but it turns out that I needed to have $30,000 ad budget set aside and then go and hire someone for $1,500 a month to work their magic for six months and then it'll work. Oh, okay. Well, I want to have a best-selling book, but it turns out that you need $200,000 in all, the, all this advertising to get your, your numbers inflated enough to hit critical mass. I mean, it's exhausting, isn't it? But it's also not a secret because you've heard these things, right? You've heard that you need traffic. You heard that you need a website. And if it was just that easy, if anyone can do it, if anyone could go on YouTube University, as they say, and if you could say, oh, okay, I'll go on YouTube and I'll, I'll say, huh, uh, how do we get traffic to my website? Well, there are millions and billions of results. And if it was so easy just to do that, 
if it was so easy to just run a Facebook ad, to just post a YouTube video, to just post a meme to Facebook every day, if it was so easy, then why don't all of us have millions of followers? Why doesn't Eric Carter and Mike Harrison and Noreen Curtis, why don't these people have millions of followers? Well, that's not the goal. You don't need millions of followers. You don't want millions of followers. You just need just the right people looking for you. And what we're talking about today, the website is coursecorrectbook.com. And what I want to tell you is that I was told I needed a book. And haven't you ever, maybe, maybe you told this to yourself or maybe someone else told this to you where you say, well, here's what you, you want to get to this goal, but you just need this. You're just missing this one piece. And, and it, it frustrates you because you say, oh, I just need this one piece. And I was told you just need a book. And they said that a book proves that you know what you were talking about. Okay, I, I, I thought, okay, that, that makes sense, right? If, if there's me who has a book and someone else who has all my exact credentials, qualifications, everything, but they don't have a book, I guess it makes sense, right? If, if I have a book and, and they don't have a book, then if I have a book that's one leg up that I have that they don't, that makes sense. They say that a book gets you speaking gigs and podcast appearances. And I mean, that's absolutely true. Like I've had William Hung from American Idol on my podcast and uh, my podcast guests just like send me all kinds of cool books that they've uh, put out. This guy, Video Persuasion, I guess he's responsible for putting out or making the GoPro camera a super popular. And so a book is pretty cool. It is pretty impressive. And I really like as a podcast host, when someone contacts me and says, Hey, can I be on your show? And I'd say, sure. And they say, Hey, what's your mailing address? And then a, a few weeks later, this like their book appears in the mail and then, and it's, it's cleverly timed like a week or two before their actual podcast appearance. And so I flip through it and we have uh, and I can kind of be like, Ooh, I'll talk about what's right there on, on, on page 17. And then we have a real, uh, a way closer conversation and it just works out well for everybody. And it would be great to have a system like that dialed in, but let's even make things uh, super simple. And let's think of our book as like a $1 or a $10 first step in the funnel of your business. Because if I went on amazon.com right this instant and I searched your name, I almost said Google search, but if I Amazoned your name, it sounds like I'm buying it. If I go to Amazon and I search your name, what comes up? Is it, is it someone else? Is it some weird other product? Uh, I, I knew a guy once on my podcast named Clay Green. And when I Googled him, I got like Play-Doh. I got like green clay. But if someone searched for these names like Meredith Bell or Rick Cesari, I would find their Amazon page and their book with a lot of reviews and I could buy it and I can find out what they're all about because I don't know about you, but Amazon is where I start uh, my stalking of, of any person, right? Am I gonna Google search and check out their website? Well, they could put anything on there. LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. I mean, I guess I could see if they've posted a video this month, but I, if I wanna really know about what a person believes and what they're, they're good at and what they do and don't do, I'm, I'm gonna look for their book. And so think about this. Think about how many people are like me when they're looking for you and they start on Amazon. And maybe if, if you had like a, a $20 book, maybe they would think about it. But if you had a 99 cent book, if they had, if there was like a little Kindle book, or even if you, if you wanted to make a good first impression on someone and you said, uh, hey, what's your address? Let me send you a book. And what if you just sent a little tiny dinky book? You know that this costs $2.20 to make. I think it's maybe like an, another like dollar or two to ship. But what if you had a big old stack of little books, take them to the networking events, pass them out, ask your existing customers about what's their mailing address and like just drop some of these in the mail. It could be easier than you have been thinking up until this point. So think about your book as a $1 or $10 first step in the funnel of your business. You want them to get your book first and then maybe after that, maybe they'll buy like a 
$50 or $100 a course, but you started off with your book and everyone throws away business cards, but who throws away your book? And in your book, you can make your case. So, uh, so recently we did a, what's called a compilation book. And that's what we're talking about today as well. But we did one with a lot of doctors and doctors are super nervous about what they what they're going to talk about because they want to seem smart right they want to get patients but they're also worried about what other doctors will think of them they're worried about saying the wrong thing and getting sued they're worried about being off brand and i told these doctors like use this to make your case right use this to explain the problem that you're solving and circle back to this business opportunity idea don't don't limit yourself to just one one keyword right? So let's say that you were like a WordPress person. You say, well, uh, I want to uh, build people's WordPress websites. Well, if you, if you just made just a book about WordPress, that would sort of limit you, right? Because if, if I say, well, I can build your WordPress site, what's your answer? Oh, I already have a WordPress site or, oh, thanks for telling me. Now I'll go and look up what WordPress is all about. And now you're trying to make the case for WordPress for this thing instead of you. And, and what are you? You're a person, right? We're talking about the people where well, you're, you are one of those important people and people matter more than things. So don't think about things in terms of WordPress or weight loss or Amazon e-commerce or what your niche is. Think about what is your biz op? What is your package? And how is this a breath of fresh air in the marketplace that's different than anything anyone's ever seen? And it's probably different because it's the thing that's simple, the thing that's actually doable and everything else is complicated. And this is the thing that can actually work. I mean, we talked earlier in that big old list, we're talking about like Apple and Tesla and things like that. Uh, Dave Ramsey is, he doesn't teach getting out of debt right? He doesn't teach building up your nest egg. He teaches doing, doing the Dave Ramsey system. So could you have some kind of like a Barbara Hales publicity system, if that was your name, instead of teaching people, well, here's how to uh, get, get on TV and here's how to uh, get, get more exposure in the media. Don't think about more, think about new and think about what is your new path. Because I tried, have you ever tried at something well, if, if you try in something, it means you're not actually happy, right? You're not actually satisfied. If you tried to go to work today or you tried to go to school today or you, you tried to get to lunch on time, you didn't actually get to lunch on time. You just tried to do it. And one of the best uh, kind of self-motivating things for me was I used, uh, years ago, I heard blogging was a new thing. And you're supposed to just spend all day long just writing cool things. This was even before social media. And I would write and I would spend like days on end writing a big long blog post and I would get some comments, but I wouldn't really get a lot of sales. And I would keep making blog posts, blog posts, blog posts. And eventually I made this one blog post that was about how to create a persuasive web page, how to uh, make, do this thing called copywriting and sales letters. And I thought I would be so mad if I gave away this information for free, and so I packaged it up as a $27 report, and I sold 1,000 copies in one year, which sure, $27,000 is not a lot, but I think that it is a lot for something that could have just been yet another free blog post. I finally got mad enough to say, I'm not going to give this away for free. People can pay some amount of money for it. And then I got to thinking, well, at that point, I did not have a paperback book, now I have 15 or 16, I think. Uh, there's like, there's some old ones, there's some new ones, and, but it took months to create some of these books. And what happened what, with some of these books out there, and I mean, I could show you all kinds of cool stuff. Here's like sort of a newish one. It's a, uh, I try to do the, the short, smaller ones these days, but there's like some huge size ones or some big honking ones. And what happened was, at first, it took me months and months. And then at the end of it, I was just so tired to even like promote it because I spent all this time writing and making it. And I wasn't really sure like how well it sold and if it really like led to any new business because I thought, man, if this like blows up my business, if this makes me like a million dollars, why wouldn't I write 10 books and make $10 million? Have you, haven't you thought in, in these terms sometimes? 
But then haven't you also at the end just been completely confused about what the output was, about what the results were? You did all this work and you said, okay, but what's, what's the finish line? What's the payoff? What did that even really lead to? And I tried all kinds of crazy things like uh, giving away signed copies of my book at speaking gigs and people didn't really care about that. But the day it all changed is there's this book that still has a lot of typos in it. I I'm actually working on uh, fixing it up this week. I probably shouldn't have mentioned that, but the day it all changed is when I put out this, uh, this book and I just, I interviewed some of my friends. I interviewed people that uh, in particular ran networking events, ran live events, and also people that were stage speakers at these live events because I wanted to be friends with them. And so now just by uh, getting some of these people on phone calls, and again, this was before podcasting, I would just get on a, a call and record it. And then guess what I had? I had a book with all these chapters of different people. And at first it started uh, with just an ulterior motive of just kissing some people's asses, right? Of just saying like, hey, you know, now we have a, a lasting permanent record of us together in a book. And even if the, the end of the world happened, even if I, I die, like if you die tomorrow, will, how long will your website survive? How long will your business survive? I don't know. But even if you die tomorrow, your book on Amazon will still live on and sell forever and ever. Even if there's no one home to collect the paycheck, your, your information, your book will still live on. And so I was playing around with just anything outside the box to use this book thing to my advantage because I thought, you know, I put all this time into these books, like uh, years later, it can still be paying off. And so I would sometimes like mail free copies of my books to customers, or if someone was new, I'd say, what's your mailing address? Can I shoot you a copy of my book? And what, what happened was with all the different books I would send, I got, and this, this book is like over a decade old, but the, it still has good information in it. Uh, but the repeat feedback was that people just flew through this book, even when it had typos and things like that. And I thought, huh, isn't that counterintuitive? Like a lot of things in life was the, the books and the things that I spent all this time on that I agonized over. Do I have a period here or a comma there or this word there? Some of those, those books uh, kind of were hit or miss. But then the, the, the book that had kind of the, the rawness, the stories, uh, people flew through this. And so this was, uh, before it was, there was even a name for it, a compilation book, a book with many authors. And they were all people that I knew and wanted to be associated with and, and like wanted a deeper connection and things like that. And it turned out that people, and that was always the, the wording, they flew through this book. And this book had the, like stories and varied lessons and not just how to step by step. Because some people, need a little more than just how to step by step, right? They need encouragement. They need ideas. They, they, they need maybe the, like the intangibles, right? And so even if you are, are someone that's in some other, some weird obscure niche, like maybe someone needs to hear your story or maybe they can recommend you to someone who is a right fit. But the point is that you don't, you don't need just how-to information. You can have cool and interesting stories. And so that's when I realized that some stories and some people click better for you than others. And this whole chicken soup for the soul format made for a way more interesting and action-packed book. So have you ever read these, these chicken soup for the soul books? Uh, I think it's, it's been years for me, but, but I, I recommend them because you can just jump in anywhere, right? You can read them out of order. If you don't like where one chapter is going, you can just skip to the next one. And even if you're like, all right, this one chapter is kind of a slog, by the time you get to the next one, it's off to something completely and totally new. It's more, more bite-sized and it's more fun. And I realized with this that I now had a way to instantly associate myself with whoever I wanted, just put them in my book. And so what, what's uh, kind of funny about this sometimes is if I know someone, who knows a bunch of other people, I'll say, hey, I see that on, on Facebook, we have 12 mutual friends. And out of those 12 friends, four of them have been in my compilation book and three more have been on my podcast. And my wife was telling me just last night, she goes, well, and I was like figuring out some list of like these like seven people that are on my podcast. And my wife goes, 
you know, when we went to dinner that one time, like over half the people just sitting at this one table at this dinner we went to, you've had them all on your podcast and you had a couple of them in your compilation books. So think about that. Like this is a, an outside the box way to, to connect with people either by getting them in your book or just like being in the same compilation book as someone else. And so when something does not work, then throw it out or tweak it or try again in a different way. But if something does work, repeat it, scale it, figure out how to do it in a better way. And so with this compilation book idea, we've assembled other compilation books. And so we have this marketer of the day book with people like uh, Craig Ballantine and people like Glenn Shelton. Uh, and we've done uh, another more recent book. I think I somewhere in this whole big staff, I was holding up like this like level up book. And I want you to notice something about this book I'm holding up here is that the, the book I'm holding on camera, even though it might be a little, little small, but we'll make it bigger, right? The book that I'm holding on camera has this really cool guy, Larry Dodd's name and photo on it. And then when we pull up the, uh, the, the book that goes on Amazon, we see that it does not have him on it. And if we look at some of these other compilation books, turn off the screen share again. We look at these side by side, and this is the exact same book, right? This sexual wellness book, but one has Dr. Kimberly Evans, trying to get the reflection out of the way, Dr. Kimberly Evans, and one has Dr. Kristen Watkins in it. And so we can take the same book and we can uh, personalize it. And what I want for you and me is for us to be in the same book together and then have the book that kind of goes out with everyone, but also have a book where there is a, a private label version is what we call it, where you are right there front and center in the cover. And when you open it up, then you are the very first chapter. So you're kind of the leader of the pack, at least as far as your personal private label version. And so you get the best of both worlds this way, right? Because if someone is doing their due diligence, or maybe that's a better way of, instead of calling it stalking, call it due diligence. If someone is Amazoning you, instead of Googling you, they can find that you're in this book. But also, if you want to send a copy in the mail, take this to a networking event, you can have the version of the book with your photo and your name on the front. And what's great about this is that uh, then yet another path, because right, we're talking about traffic and we're talking about ways people can find you. Another path someone can find to you is if they get this book from someone else or, or from me or from some other, uh, you know, some other way, and then they discover you from this book. And most of these book co-authors came from my podcast because here's here's the thing is that the there's still the writer's block problem right you say okay well i know that i i need a book i've kind of always wanted one or maybe one's a few years out of date and uh and so there's this kind of this compilation book idea and you could write something and send it in and we'll put it in here but i mean sometimes it's hard to really like capture just the right words when you're writing or you're like oh i gotta write like all these pages and so I kind of stumbled upon this, this idea of having you personally, you write out there in, in Zoom webinar land, having you uh, as an interview on my podcast, and we'll just have a conversation about you and your business and all kinds of, whatever, wherever it goes, and then refine it into a compilation book. And then it sounds like you, but it's super heavily edited. And so it says the things that, make you unique and special and really smart and really clever, but it, it says it without all of the spokenness and it's written in your voice, but it's written in the, it says it in the words that you want to say it in. And so uh, I, I interviewed these people and they all had these kind of biz ops, right? So there was this guy, Mark Podolsky, who was in our marketer of the day book, that one with the black cover you saw a moment ago. 
And his biz op is these things called tax liens and tax deeds where you can get property really cheap and then like, like flip it or sell it through all these uh, cool things. So he didn't say, he did not say, well, I'll, I'll make you a better land flipper or better real estate. He said, here's my, my opportunity, my business opportunity. We had Tammy Wassinger who talked about how to eliminate bad habits, especially with food. And I think she's like a, a nutritionist. And so instead of saying, I'll help you get your blood sugar improved. No, no, no. It's her program, right? It's here's all these ways that don't work, but then here's my new revolutionary system that does work. We had Susie Pruden who talked about failing your way to success. And so uh, some, some of these uh, chapters, some of these stories were more like more how to leaning and some were more story leaning and some were just fun, but wh how, whatever way you go with it, whichever way it ends up evolving, it revolves around the opportunity. And I mean, even if you don't want to be in our, our course correct book, which is at coursecorrectbook.com, it's totally okay. Whether you're in it or whether you're not in it, think about this. It revolves around your opportunity because instead of saying, I want to, help you improve your finances you say here's my my system to to build your income or if you say instead of helping you lose the weight here's my system to for to, for you to lose weight now a lot of other pieces fall into place because now there's a clear problem right and a lot of the problem is the existing establishment where uh, and like we put out a course a few years ago about how to uh, make money from voiceovers and there was already the the voiceover establishment and a lot of these like pretentious hoity-toity people that are just fine with the status quo and they're just fine keeping you down and they're just fine talking themselves up and how great they are and you say you know this is a problem is that you are not getting the, the help that you need and here's my system and you have clear enemies right you have people that do things a different way like I mean, we were talking about Dave Ramsey. Imagine the, the Robert Kiyosaki nuts or the, the Grant Cardone nuts or the people that say, just leverage everything that you have versus the, the Dave Ramseys. And there are obvious setbacks leading to this point. And we use things like making money and, and health as an easy example because the, the examples present themselves very clearly. But think about how many times you personally, I don't care what, what your weight is or what your age is, how many times you personally have tried and failed to lose weight or at least exercise or at least eat better, right? We've all failed many times, but like we said before, it's okay if you failed up to this point, just keep on going because that's, that's part of life. And you might fail 90% of the time, but as long as you succeed sometimes, it's okay, right? It's okay to have those projects, those ideas that you start but don't finish and Sometimes you need someone to accelerate your progress for you, if nothing else, just to get to a finish line in a reasonable amount of time. Imagine if you had a, a, an idea that would take you one month length of time to get it done. And then you got another idea and another idea. So you have three different ideas and each thing is going to take you one month of time to get it done. Well, it's tempting to say, I'm gonna do some of this, some of this, some of this, and you're continuously cycling through these three things that you just keep on going to this, going to this, going to this. Now three months have passed, and guess what? Each of these three projects is about 95% of the way done. And I, I know you've done something like this in some form, and it's frustrating, right? And it's sometimes it's like how we fall into things. So imagine you're tackling three projects, right? Project one takes a month, project two takes a month, project three takes a month. The way it ends up working out, three months later, neither of the three projects are done. And you think back and you're down on yourself and you, you kick yourself while you're down and you're your own worst critic and you say, what I shoulda, woulda, coulda done is month one, I should have just focused on this one month project and that would have been finished. Month two, I should have just focused on just this one month project. Month three, just this one month project. But it's easy for, if a project takes too long, it's easy to get distracted, switch gears, right, shiny object, I know all that. So the answer is, what if you had me to shortcut it 
shortcut a month or three months into just 20 or 30 minutes. And then it was just the wheels were in motion and you can go and focus on whatever you were doing. But this compilation book with us together as co-authors, that was, that's churning along, cranking along. And this way, you can then focus on what makes you great and what makes people like you and buy from you and the no like and trust, if you've heard that phrase. And this way, you can be a breath of fresh air and you can provide a new way of thinking. So that way, you're not just saying, well, keep on doing what you're doing. No, you're saying, here's my new way of doing things. Here's my new system. And you can even self-deprecate slightly. You can make fun of your past self because if you're making fun of yourself now, it makes me think, I'm not sure if I'm, I really want to buy from you. I'm not sure if I, why should I believe in you if you don't believe in yourself? But if you say, you know, 10 years ago, I made these mistakes and I, I've corrected them since then. You're like, okay, like that shows like you have some self-awareness and some personal growth, things like that. So thinking in terms of an opportunity gives you all these features as a bonus, right? Your past failures that I can relate to. And then I say, oh, well, he's where, where I am now, or he was way worse off where I am now, and he's way better. And I want to kind of write his coattails and get to where he is now. And this is all a better vehicle to get to the already established goal. And again, we're, we're using the simple examples, losing weight, right? People have tried all these methods of losing weight, but the goal is still to lose that weight. And so if you say, all the things you've tried in the past, like it, it's okay that you've tried those things, but try my way. It'll get you to that same goal you've always wanted, but in a much better and easier way. And that's where I want to say, don't write a book because we know you need traffic. We know that being in a book is a really good thing for you, especially being in a, a freshly published updated book. And guess what? You can be in a book with all of us plus by yourself and Everyone throws away a business card, but you see how the back of these books, there's this guy's picture, here's his bio, there's his website, his uh, city, his phone number. It's already got a business card, but if someone says, all right, there's this business card, I can't throw it away. I feel weird throwing it away. It doesn't really cost that much more than a business card. And I mean, think about how many of those stacks of business cards you bought and never got to the end of the stack of business cards, right? So instead of giving away 200 business cards that everyone's gonna throw away, why not use the same amount of, of budget that you would of getting that big old stack of business cards and just give away $22 books with already your business card in it. And when you, I mean, there's like pictures and even at the, at the top, there's your web address anyway. So it's even way better than a business card. And it's better than the book because you have all these other, uh, these other way it expresses itself. So what do they try? Because we're talking about who, who do you and me not like? Well, we don't like people that take super long on their book. If someone takes 10 years writing their book, I don't want to learn from that kind of person. I, I, I don't have 10 years. I'll be off in some, in some other thing by 10 years. I'll, I'll be like, I have a new idea for a book in 10 years and I'll wish that I'd published 10 books in that time. So they try writing a book sentence by sentence. They bust out the microphone and they, they say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just pontificate and I'll be like a, a doctor in the 1950s and that secretary will uh, type up what I say and make me sound brilliant and I'll, I'll spend two years editing. Well, how long would it take you to do that? How long would it take you to create your own book? I mean, have you tried? Have you started? Are you halfway through? It's okay if you are, but just think about like how much time is usually involved in the old way of making a book. And I mean, there's more than one way to do it, but even if you paid a ghostwriter or had a big old thick book that you were editing, like how expensive would it be if you said, you know, I wrote, I wrote all this and I need you to run spell check on it. How, how expensive would that be? Well, is there a reason for not doing it this way? There's a lot of reasons, right? There's a lot of reasons for just not, not raking yourself over the coals and not making it so dang hard on yourself. And so what's the easy way? Well, the easy way, what the easy but worthwhile way is this new book called Course Correct. And it's called Course Correct Lessons, Principles, and Strategies from Smart People Like You 
who transformed failure into success. And this is your, your chance to be in a chicken soup for the soul. I'm, I'm not sure if that's, uh, if that's like a, a trademark infringement or something, but you get the idea, right? It's a book where you are in a group of people that are, are winners just like you, who you can now associate with, and you are a co-author with me. And guess what? Instead of writing a whole book, you can just write just a chapter and send it in, and then you end up with a business card, but you end up with a chapter with all these other people. And even if you can't write and you've tried the transcribing and you know talking into the microphone sort of stuff, I'll meet with you and I'll ask some questions about yourself and your struggles and your ahas. And I guarantee that you have all these things, but if you're staring at a blank page, it's hard for it to come out. But if you and I are just talking like, like friends and I'm asking you these questions, somehow just the magic happens that way. And it's even better than a book because my team will get to work creating five different books for you. I mean, crazy, right? Instead of just like you spending all the time on one book, you'll have five books for the less than the price of one. And here's what we can give you is you can have that digital Amazon Kindle book. So someone Amazons you, they can get your book instantly for free for 99 cents, see what you're all about. And, uh, and then you also get the paperback version. So that way there is a book that someone can get instantly, but it's a book that someone can also get delivered in the mail. We also create this private label version. And I've showed you all these different kinds of books here where we have the same book, but the, uh, the uh, just different variations of these different people on the cover. And I know if you're going to get into the technical details, this, this is not on Amazon. Like there's, there's one copy with everyone that's on Amazon, but then there's all these kind of offshoots that are print on demand where you can, there is a web page you can send people to, to order a copy themselves. You can uh, order as many copies of your own book as you want at cost and I'll mail it right to you. Uh, and I'll send you some in the mail anyway, so you can uh, like sell them on your own or give them away. But there's a private label version with you on the cover. There's also a standalone version, which we, we've shown a few times where there's the, the big book. It's hard to tell, but there's the, the big book and the small book, right? The, the big book, you just have your chapter. The small book, it you also have your chapter, but that's just the whole entire book, right? And the different like subheadings are instead sort of chapters in this small book that is super focused and has your contact details, but also has the the elevator speech. Haven't you heard of this concept? It has what you do and what you have to say in a short condensed form. So that way people are still hungry and or thirsty to go and find you and your contact details are all in this, but there's just enough in this book to say a lot in a short amount of time and give people just enough of an aha to maybe carry it around in their pocket. They'll actually get to it because if you're like me, don't you have just a lot of books that you haven't even gotten to? Well, you could breeze through a book like this in a couple of minutes. And so could anyone else that you hand your mini pocketbook standalone version to. And to make it even better, I, when we do these compilation books, I narrate them. I make them into audiobook form. And if you've heard of audible.com, some people just like to listen. And we will get your book put, or we get the book with all of us put on audible.com. So that way, if someone is not a reader, if they're a listener, then you are there as well. Not to mention that in our interview, we'll put you on my podcast, we'll publish it on YouTube. And so if you've heard of this idea of recycling content, of doing the work once and doing, putting it everywhere, well, guess what? All you have to do is just show up for a conversation with me or send it in writing and we'll put it into all these different places. And this is coursecorrectbook.com. The Course Correct book is all about how you personally, I'm not saying in general terms, but you specifically watching and listening to this call. The Course Correct book is about how you were able to overcome your limits to achieve the next level in your business mindset and or relationships. And even if you are already a successfully published author, or if you've never had a book, been in a book, whatever your situation is, 
past mistakes don't matter. The past is what led you here right now. And go to coursecorrectbook.com, pay close attention, and you can find out how this nonfiction book, where you have your own chapter, contains stories about adjusting and adapting to business and life struggles, whatever that means for you. Everyone's unique, but I think it's an interesting concept because anyone can relate to you failing, having difficulties, and having to change course to adjust, to point yourself in a different direction to get to somewhere more desirable. And the audience of people are business owners looking for increased confidence and better strategy. And just at the end of each of these chapters, let me find the end of one of these, a person's chapters. At the end of each chapter, there's your photo, there's your bio, there's whatever you want as far as talking about your accomplishments, your websites, send someone to your blog, send someone to your other book, send someone to a, an opt-in page if you know what that is, but use this as a way to, uh, to get access to new crowds of people that you would not have access to before. Course Correct, the compilation book, you submit your chapter in writing or I interview you. We take that, we publish the book on Amazon. We get you the customized version, the pocket version. I'll mail you a copy of the Amazon book. I'll mail you five physical copies of your big book. I'll mail you five physical copies of your standalone pocket book. And there are special links where you can get as many copies of your book printed and mailed to you at cost for a total value today of $4,910. But you don't have to pay $4,910. It's just $9.97 to get yourself in a published book. How much would it cost for a ghostwriter? How much time has it already cost you to do all the things necessary to put things out in a book? I put out books on a regular basis all the time. I want you to be part of this. This is my, my business model. I mean, it's kind of like do you, do you want to fix your own plumbing or just have someone that enjoys fixing plumbing and does it all day, every day and doesn't make all these mistakes? So it's not just $9.97. It's just $500 for you to be a part of this course correct book. But there are hard deadlines on this. The train is leaving the station. Go here right now, coursecorrectbook.com. And there's a surprise for you on that page as well. You're going to be shocked, amazed, and maybe even slightly bewildered at the price at how, how low cost this is, how affordable this is, how if you're one of these people that say, you know, if only if there wasn't this standing in my way, ah, oh, you know what, shucks, I'd love to be in a book like this, but there is this, this, this one obstacle, right? Ah, it's, it's just a little bit of work. Ah, it's just, it's just barely too much money. You're gonna be shocked at the price. We've done something like it's great. It's one of the most amazing things we've ever done as far as like, like pricing and what, what you, the bang for your book that you can get at coursecorrectbook.com. So as we wrap up, wind down, as you go right now to coursecorrectbook.com, think about this phrase, this saying, stop being afraid of what could go wrong and get excited about what will go right. Think about this. If it's important, you'll find a way. But if it is not important, you'll find an excuse. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. How about something that goes far and fast? Well, you can find it right now at coursecorrectbook.com. Hurry up, go ahead, do it right now. We are about to close this call down. It will be very abrupt. I don't want you to lose your place. I do not want you to miss that, that link, that URL, the place to go is coursecorrectbook.com. We'll see you there. C-O-U-R-S-E-C-O-R-R-E-C-T-B-O-O-K.com, coursecorrectbook.com. I'm Robert Plank. I will see you at coursecorrectbook.com.